everybody welcome to the Waldock way I'm Jessica and today's video is going to be about our homeschool portfolio using OneNote so I keep a digital homeschool portfolio last year I showed you guys our first grade homeschool portfolio and I had a ton of questions and so I asked if any of you had questions again as we came into this video I'm going to be sharing with you guys my second grade homeschool portfolio as well as letting you follow me along as I set up our third grade one. Um, this is not a tutorial. I am not a tutorial person. That's not in my wheelhouse, but I will bring you along for the ride and maybe you'll pick up a few things. Maybe you won't. I'm not sure. But some of you asked if you could see how I set one up. So I'm going to let you guys look at our second grade portfolio on a screencast. Let you follow me along as I set up our third grade. But first I had a few questions that I wanted to answer. So that's what we're going to do first. And the very first question I have is why do I keep a portfolio? I keep a portfolio because in the state of Florida, we are required to either keep a homeschool portfolio and have it evaluated every year or do standardized testing. We choose the portfolio option for a few different reasons. Number one, we keep a portfolio just because we enjoy keeping it. Now, even if my state didn't require it, I would still keep some sort of record of our learning, even though it probably wouldn't be as maybe intricate or detailed as it is now, which honestly mine's really not that intricate or detailed. Um, I would still keep like a synopsis diary type thing of what we did and pictures just because of memory sake. I want Emily to have that years from now. I want to have that years from now. Um, I enjoy being able to go back and look at it to see what we did to reference it. Like let's say for instance, um, ocean. Ocean is a topic that we do frequently. I can easily go back to last year when we did it, when we're getting ready to do it this year, um, and see what did we do? What did we not do? What did we spend a ton of time on based off of pictures? What did she enjoy? What games did we play? What shows did we watch to make sure that maybe we're not doing those exact same things again this year? Because a year later, who knows? I mean, I might've forgot. So that portion, that portion of it is really nice too, to be able to reference it as I'm planning for the next year. Um, but the main reason that we keep one is because our state requires it. Okay. I had somebody ask me why I keep our portfolio digitally. So I kept a physical portfolio for two years for preschool and kindergarten, um, which by the way, you don't even have to keep a portfolio in the state of Florida until your child is six. I was just being an extra homeschool mom. Like you guys know I am. So it's just who I was. And not only was I being extra in keeping one, I was also being extra in the fact that my homeschool portfolio was like a five inch binder. No joke. We had to like special order this giant binder. Um, but Emily's kindergarten year, well, her kinder slash first year, I believe it was like late that year. We had three hurricanes that we had to evacuate for. We live in a manufactured home a block from the river. So anytime a decent sized hurricane is coming, we're evacuated. And every time we would evacuate, I was like lugging this giant binder with us everywhere. Um, because I, in the state of Florida, even after you have it, your portfolio evaluated, your school board can still request to see it for up to either two or three years. Um, so you have to keep it. And I just had this like huge fear that they were going to request it and the hurricane was going to have like flooded our house. It was going to be ruined and I wasn't able to prove that we did anything. I don't know. You know, our house burns down. Like all of these things started going through my head after the third time of me lugging this 20 pound five inch binder with me as we evacuated. And it just was something that I called our homeschool liaison for our county and I said is there anything in the law that says I can't keep it digitally as long as I still have all of the things that a portfolio must have for the state of Florida which is like a list of resources used um, a list of educational activities and samples and she said absolutely not so it just became one of those things that was like we're just gonna keep it digitally so we don't have to worry about lugging it around about it getting lost or whatever also, it makes it so much easier for me to go back and reference as well as if the school board was to contact me, it would take me five seconds to be able to lay my hands on it. I wouldn't have to go, you know, dig through a shed to find a specific portfolio grade year and then drive it to them and drop it off. I could just send it in an email. And that brings me to the next question was, do I print it out for the evaluation? And the answer to that is no. <laughs> um, so our evaluation that we do is actually a digital evaluation anyway, or a virtual evaluation. Our evaluator is located in Florida, but not in our town. 
So I either, I'm not sure, I have to look at it again to see what I did last year. I either export that whole file and send them the exported copy or I invite them to review it. I don't remember which way they prefer that I do that, but either way I can either invite them as a reviewer so that they can see everything within OneNote or I can export it to a PDF and they can see everything as like a PDF. Um, either way, it takes him like two days to go through everything, maximum to comb through all of it. He looks at everything. He calls me and Emily, talks to us for about, you know, 15 to 20 minutes. And then that's it. Our evaluation is super simple and super sweet. Um, I also send that same copy to my husband and I. So we also have it in our emails as well, just in case, you know, something wants to happen to the cloud. I don't know. But no, I do not print it all. It would be a ton of paper. Um, and then the last question that I had was how long does it take me to actually keep the portfolio, like, um, to maintain it? And I have weekly logs that you guys are going to see in just a minute when I show you our second grade portfolio. Those take me about five to 10 minutes each week. I do them Sunday nights when I'm like in bed. I, the OneNote has a mobile app, so I use my phone in bed and I just type them up really quick. Um, I have kind of a form that I copy and paste, so it's super simple. I type in the shows we watched and the games we play. I plug in like all the pictures I've taken. I just plug those in and then I type out two or three sentences that say like this week we, um, okay, for instance, this week Emily was super enthralled with, uh, you know, designing her own zoo. So we did this, this, and this, and then she built her own zoo out of Legos. Like something super simple just to remind, like to trigger my brain. Oh yeah, that's what we did that week super simple. Um, the rest of it is something I set up at the beginning of the year, like the resources I just type out what I'm going to use once I've made a decision. The book log takes me five seconds because I just import from Goodreads. Um, most of those things are just at the very, very end of the year when I'm closing our year up, maybe an hour is what that takes me. And that's to scan all of our samples in, um, you know, import our Goodreads book log, and just kind of like finalize, I copy and paste all of our out school classes, um, just kind of finalize the, our records portion of it. But again, it takes me maybe an hour and then the rest of it takes me five to 10 minutes a week. So it's really not a huge time um, investment in keeping that. Okay, so I think that answered all of your questions. If you have any more, leave them in the comments down below. But now I'm gonna go ahead and do a screencast with you and show you through our second grade portfolio. And then we're gonna go ahead and set up our third grade. So this is what our second grade portfolio in OneNote looks like. In case you've never seen OneNote, it is set up where you have notebooks. Within notebooks, you have sections. And then within those sections, you have pages. So you can see here, I have a personal notebook. And then I have grades for each of the ones that we're doing. And then inside each, I have two sections, records and weekly logs. And then I keep specific pages in each of those. So within records, I have our second grade goals, which I just type out each year. And then I use this little checkbox right here to be able to check it when I feel like we've mastered it. This year I added an attendance log. And for the attendance log, all I did was copy and paste from my planner. And then I can highlight um, by just doing that. So you just select it and use the little highlight thing. And at the bottom, I totaled up how many days we had done school this year. My resources used page is just very basic resources that we've used. So like overall, these are some of the things we use for language arts, the most frequent things we use for math and et cetera. One thing I was very excited about is I learned how to link within OneNote. So if you click read alouds right here, it takes you to the book log page. And the, rate, the way you can do that is you just right click, um, copy link to the specific page or um, section or whatever it is you're looking to copy. And then when you highlight, you can insert the link and then you would paste it and hit apply and then it could go anywhere. Same thing if you want it to go to a web page like this. When you click it, it's going to take you to uh, my blog post for morning baskets. That way I didn't have to retype all of that out. They could just see that without me having to type everything. So classes taken is all of our out school classes. I wait until the very end of the year and then I just copy and paste from the transcript portion of out school. Same thing with book log. I scan our books on Goodreads throughout the year. And then at the very end of the year, I export that shelf and then save it as a PDF and insert it here as a printout. 
I can't show you inside testing and evaluation because our address is on all of those forms, but all that is is any tests that we've taken for the year, which we actually didn't do testing this year, I did last year. Um, and then the evaluation from the evaluator and the um, confirmation from our county that they received our evaluation. But like I said, both of those have our address on it. Samples, I scan in a portion of what we did for the year. So for daily fundamentals, I scanned in this sheet that I had made of what it was gonna cover. Then I just chose day one of each week for no specific reason, but that just was easy. So I scanned in 30 pages instead of 150. Um, and down at the bottom, I have some of our unit studies where I scanned in a few pages from our veterinarian unit that we did. And then I scanned in a few pages from Passport to More Adventures, some of Waldock's Wizards and Wands, and then I also scanned in some of the Who Was um, people that she did, like there's Ernest Shackleton and Sally Ride. Um, I also scanned in a few pages that we did with um, our nature co-op here and I added her extra math because she had worked so hard on that. So I added her extra math report. So it's just a sample. It's not a ton. It's not everything we did for the year, but it gives them a really good overview. And to answer one of the questions I got, I do not keep papers. After this portion is done and everything is scanned in, all of the papers go in the recycling bin. For weekly logs, I keep a very basic weekly log. So I keep something for the summer that looks like this, where it just says we had a great time over the summer, here's all the shows we watched, here's all the games we played, and here um, are some photos from the summer. And then I do the same for winter break and spring break. Um, and then for the actual weeks, I just put a week in here and a date. And for instance, it just says, you know, this week we did this specific tournament, we completed this in our daily fundamentals. These are the shows we watched. These are the games we played. It's just a very basic template just to kind of remind me what we did um, that week. Now, I am going to go ahead and set up third grade for you guys. There's nothing in here right now. And I know that I'm gonna want a section titled records. So I'm gonna go ahead and make that section and a section titled weekly logs. Now, what I do is within my notebook under homeschooling, I keep kind of a blank template of each of these things. So I know for goals, I'm going to want to move or copy that to my third grade record section. So I'm gonna copy it there. Same thing with my attendance log. And same thing with resources used, it's just like a basic form for me to start with. And then this is the basic weekly log. This week we, and then completed, shows, watch, games, played. So I'm going to move and copy that one to third grade weekly logs. And now when I go to third grade, we're going to have some pages here within records and a page here within weekly logs. Now I delete this blank page because we don't need that. But what I can do now is I can take this one weekly log and I can just keep copying it in here over and over and over. And then I can go in and say week one and then I normally leave it like this. That way I don't feel pressured and I just go weeks one through whatever. I put in a spring break, a winter break and a summer break and leave them blank for dates. Um, and then that way I can just come in here and type this week we, you know, played in the pool, etc. And then we completed, we'll just say we completed dev, our daily fundamentals um, week one. We watched Dr. Pole because we always watch Dr. Pole and we played Yahtzee because we always play Yahtzee. And then I would insert a picture and that week would be done. But I, again, I do all of this for my phone. Once I get this set up, I don't come back to the computer until the very end of the year. Same thing with records. I would go in here and type our language arts and math goals and then I keep this in my planner and transfer it over at the end of the year and then resources used I would just start typing in our resources used and any other things like I'm gonna obviously need a page that's our book log uh, I'll need a page that is our classes taken and I'm gonna need a testing and evaluation and a sample. All of that is things that will be added in at the very end of the year. So for the most part, other than me coming in and copying this, you know, 35 more times, 
it is set up for third grade.